the trucker. I'm okay. I'm okay. Back um, in the building. Is, I'm, I'm still out here. Man, what's street. going on, D? It's been <laughs> a long time. How here. you feel? It's, it's, it's a struggle right now. I ain't gonna lie, but but I'm I'm trying. I'm, that's what I can say is that I am trying. I think um I got a little spoiled pre COVID and post COVID is kicking my ass. <laughs> Um, that's what I can say is that I am trying. I think um, I got a little spoiled pre-COVID, and post-COVID is kicking my ass. <laughs> so, so pre pre-COVID had I, had you spoiled, and 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 post-COVID kind of kind of put you in your place. Huh? It really, it really did. It it knocked me out of that little high I had, and, and I realized that. The, what I was seeing was not the norm, and um, it is a good thing that I didn't you know, jump on that bandwagon and, and do a lot of the things that I was thinking about doing um, so soon. I'm glad that I decided to wait a little more, save a little more before I did anything, because had I done anything, um, I, I would have been in a lot of trouble right now, <laughs> so... But yeah, like I started right before, um, well, not actually, no, I started maybe about three months after they started the whole, you have, you had to have curfews, you couldn't be outside and all that other kind of mess um, in 2020. And that's when I started trucking. So I'm thinking that the money that I was making then was normal, but in reality, it was pretty much to keep the truck keep truckers on the road and that's what the money we was making was out of desperation and we got to make sure that we got people to move this freight and so loads I was ecstatic when I got loads going to California I was literally going from coast to coast and and, um and I was making some pretty damn good money and it's a good thing I was saving all that as well but um but then things started to regulate things got normal COVID went away for a little bit and everybody started coming outside, and then all of a sudden, those rates started dropping. So this is not, right now, the way things are going, I wouldn't recommend this for nobody. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling right now, but it's like, I, I haven't figured out if I'm going to continue on doing this or if I'm going to just bounce to something else, because I actually like driving. That's something that I actually like doing, um, but... I don't know, man. These these rates are just getting lower and lower and lower. And I'm like, damn, like after a while, it's like you're not even going to be making enough money to even keep in your pocket. It's kind of like it's kind of crazy right now. It, it is. It's really crazy right now. Oh my God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. <laughs> Sumatran beans. And I also have to give credit to the grind. 20, 2020, you came out. Uh, mm-hmm. You came out as a trucker. Uh, yep. It sounds as though you you went right into leasing after you came out. And I'm, 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 oh yeah, no, no ifs ands or buts about it. My um, the trainer that I had uh, was a lease was a lease driver, and so that's all I was seeing. So he was really straightforward. He showed me what he was making and and um and how to do things and i was like oh well i can do this and everybody was telling me oh you should be you should get a become a company driver at first because it's your first time driving by yourself in case something happens blah 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 blah. but i was i was pretty confident myself i was like what hell no like if there's a possibility i can make this amount of money i'm gonna attempt to make that amount of money so when i i did just that i didn't bother being a company driver i immediately became a lease operator and and just as I thought, I was making the money that I wanted to make. And so I I don't regret that at all. But I did make an attempt after I left my, I can't even say last company, because I never thought I would switch companies. I thought I was going to stay where I was the entire time I was driving. Um, but that didn't happen. So I ended up switching companies and I decided I was going to try to become a company driver. I don't. I don't know how people are, are company drivers. I, that micromanaging like that is just ridiculous. That that was a little overwhelming for me. So I immediately left maybe after two months. And the company that I'm at now, I got back onto leasing. And um, so far, so good. We'll All see right. How 
All right. Look so uh, with with the micromanaging, I I get it. I understand a lot of a lot of companies, uh, mom and pops included, have uh, dispatchers that like to keep close tabs on drivers and i can understand if it's in the beginning like if it's in the beginning of the marriage yeah Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. once 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 the honeymoon is over you don't have to constantly call me or keep tabs on me you you pretty much got to understand how i run and and i can get the job done without no additional uh uh big brother looking over me exactly exactly but this particular company wasn't like that. It was just a constant, it was just a constant micromanaging. And then, um, and another thing that got me was like, oh, they would do pre-plans and stuff like that. Because me, I like to know where I'm going next. Like, like just keep me rolling. And um, like, we would have a plan put into action. And then I drop off, I'm ready to pick up the next load and shit and change. And I'm like, what is happening right now? And then I'm sitting out for a long time or they're sending me to these crazy ass places with these crazy docs. And I'm like, it, yeah, it, it, it just, I, I just don't know how <laughs> just, I mean, I, I respect, I respect all company drivers. I respect them because oddly enough, you got some of them out here making more money than the lease operators. Um, so I, I, I respect them making money, but it's, it's just, it's a little, it was overwhelming for me. I'm like, I'm just going to stick to what I know, what I like. So I went back to leasing and um, I think that this is, this is my cup of tea <laughs> is the leasing. Cause I'm really good at saving for a rainy day. And I'm not out here. I'm, I'm not out here trying to look like I got money. I'm okay with my $5 Walmart outfit. <laughs> so I can keep money in my pocket. I prefer to use my money on um, vacations and stuff like that. But um, so as long as you are able to, you got good money management skills and stuff like that, you can weather any storm. But the way things are looking, I don't know how long this storm is going to last because I didn't think it was going to last this long. But everybody's saying that, you know, it's it's coming back. And I'm like, damn, is it really? Because <laughs> I ain't seen it yet. Well, you said uh, you you said something to the effect that you you was planning on staying staying with it until the end of the year, and then after that yeah. uh, after that in twenty twenty four you 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 gonna take a a couple of months hiatus. Oh. What's the plan uh, doing your hiatus? I mean, you just gonna sit back, relax, and and reset or reassess? What what are we doing? I'm gonna do all of that. Um, uh, the, the plan is definitely to, to get to relax and, you know, and kind of find myself again, but also figure out what I'm going to do next. If this is something that I'm going to continue doing, um, or if there's something else that I want to try out, I'm not a hundred percent sure just yet. Um, but yeah, just to, just to figure out what my next move is going to be and to, because oddly enough, like I literally have gone like nonstop since I started, you know, literally, um, I say that I, you know, I switch, I switch, uh, companies two other times. I literally drove to my last load with one company. The next day I was in orientation. Three days later, I was back on the road. That's how it has been for the last three years. It hasn't been, it's just been non-going, non-stop. And so, yeah, I just want to take those two months to just, yes, to, you know, to experience regular living for just a little bit um, and to also figure out what my next move is going to be because I really haven't had time to just sit around and, and to think. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, damn good coffee and hot. Leasing, uh, you, you feel a lot comfortable doing that. Uh, are you able to pick your own loads, uh, pick wherever you want to go, or is, is it still dispatched to you? No, I can I can pick the, which loads that I want. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, so with, with that said, since you've been leasing for all these years, uh, do you do you feel comfortable or do you feel confident enough to uh, go into owner operations now? Not right now. I would never do that right now. Uh-uh. The way things are, I would I would absolutely not do that. 
um, to be responsible. I mean, I am responsible for my truck now, but it is, it is very different when you a hundred percent own the truck. Cause it's a, because when you're in a leasing, you lease program, you have this major company that will, uh, will front the cost. When you have, when it's yours and you own it and it's in, you know, that is, you are responsible for the upfront cost. So that's a very big difference. So that is definitely not something I would put on my plate right now. I I just, I wouldn't do that. Because there's so many truckers right now that, you know, during COVID, you know, they made these decisions to buy these trucks. And I was almost one of them. I really was. I was almost one of them. And, um, and they were, and right now, I would say like most of those people that I know that bought their trucks during COVID, they've had to turn them back in. And they've taken like thousands of dollars of hit um, because of doing that. Because again, like I said, the low state paying. Are you serious? Hold on one second. This guy is being retarded right now. Um, I'm sorry. And um, but yeah, like it, it's it's definitely not something that I would I would do. But I'm a lot more cautious. You got people who. You know, they're like, I'm, I'm going to go take that chance. I'm just not one of them people. You know, I see how, how the market is going. You know, I see what these loads are paying. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not about to set myself up for failure like that. And, you know, I've, you know, I've managed these last few years. I've managed to save myself up a nice little, nice little nesting egg. I'm, I'm going to hold on to that. <laughs> I'm not about to go out there and do something stupid and then, you know, I'm in debt because I've managed to get myself out of debt. I'm not trying to put myself in there, especially when I'm not 100% confident of the market and how things are going. D, yeah. for, for new drivers that's coming in, and, and again, thank you very much for uh, the conversation. I really appreciate the, uh, the catch-up. But for new drivers yeah. that's coming in, because you mentioned the fact that you got yourself a nice little nest egg after three years, uh, yeah. Give give these new drivers some tips on how they can uh, how how they can save while trucking. Um, I don't know. It's, it's I don't know, but people are just not. You know, you got a lot of truckers out there. You know, there's there's certain amount of money that they haven't made before, and you know, and they're like, oh, you know, I, I could make a couple of thousand a week, and you know, and they just and they're living paycheck to paycheck in this particular this particular business you can't live paycheck to paycheck you can't assume that you're going to get the same amount that you got last week you know there's, there's going to be a time when you don't make enough especially if you're a lease driver if you're a company driver i'm not 100 percent sure but as a lease driver if you know you can't assume that you're going to make the same amount of money every week my thing is is um lighten the load for yourself me, I gave up everything when I decided to get on the road. I gave up my apartment, my car, and I was like, I'm going to stay on my truck, and I'm just going to work. This is exactly what I've been doing, and it worked for me. A lot of people can't handle being on the road like that. Um, you know, they miss home and stuff like that. But if you're someone who can, you know, who don't mind being on the road, um, you know, don't be going to the truck stops and spending your money there because you'll go broke doing that. You know, you got a refrigerator, get yourself a, you know, a, a a burner or something like that a pot start buying you some food and having it on the truck you save money there i say just take just figure out what your goal is because i would never tell anybody to do this for a long haul but that's me you got drivers out there who've been on the road for 20 or 30 years and you know you got people who just you know they they love the road like that but if you're somebody who's goal oriented and you do you just want to come out here and you want to make your little money so you can do the thing that you actually want to do you know, just have a really good game plan and just stick with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no need for you to come out here and, and be flashy. There's no need for any of that because it, it's not cute out here at all. It stinks. It's it's kind of dirty a little bit. You get oil in weird spots. So there's no point in you coming out here, um, you know, wearing your Christian Dior outfits and your chains and stuff like that. Please don't do that. Don't go out there and spend, and spend your money on that type of stuff. Hold on to your money. Invest it. Um, definitely invest it. Like if if you're somebody who wants to get into real estate, I got into real estate since I've been out here. Um, but um, just just be smart with your money. That's all I can say. Don't go out here and you know get excited about this money and then 
um, go out there and, you know, spend up all your money on frivolous things that you're probably going to lose within the next few months. And then you look up and you realize that all your money is gone. So just have a plan, stick with it. And, um, and don't get caught up with the, you know, oh, I got all of this money now and, and all this other kind of crap. No, just because you had a good week this week don't mean you're going to have a good week next week. And you have to keep that in mind. Just learn really good money management skills and you'll be fine out here. Just don't automatically, again, don't automatically assume that um, that you're going to, you know, be balled out of control out here. It, it, it's not COVID anymore. <laughs> it's not that. And it's like, it really bothers me when you see so many people online talking about how much money you're making, they're making in, um, in trucking right now. And I'm, I'm like laughing. I'm like, cause you're not being a hundred percent honest on what's really going on out here. But you know, it's, but it's definitely money out here to be made. Um, but you, again, you have to learn really good money, uh, saving skills and, you know, keep to your goal. And, you know, whenever you reach your goal and you want to go out and you want to buy something, then go do that. But in the meantime, don't bother, you know, get all this expensive stuff and, you know, and it's going to end up getting dirty because once you do your pre-check, <laughs> the oil going to end up so crazy, fuck up your new outfit anyway. <laughs> Our favorite Korean's getting robbed right now. You serious? First he tells me his wife has the flu. Oh man, that bitch would work if she was dead. Then he gives me the coffee for free. Shit. He is getting robbed. How do you want to play it? Man, it sounds like you it sounds like you got the game plan. So why why is it so much of a struggle, man? It's it's I think it's just again, again, I'm ad adjusting. I'm adjusting. I mean like again, like I said, COVID it co I thought trucking was COVID. And I got a huge reality shock when I realized that that is not real trucking. Real trucking is now. <laughs> this is the real trucking right here. And it's, and it's not, you know, and it's not so. Glamorous. Excuse me, it's not so glamorous. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, me, <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm a hustler or anything like that, but I do what I got to do. So, and I'm always going to do what I got to do. So again, right now, my goal was always to, to be in trucking no more than five years to save as much as I needed to save and then figure out what my next step is going to be. That was always going to be my goal. <laughs> Excuse me. And then as I was out here, I was, you know, I was thinking, okay, maybe I can buy my own truck. But again, I was like, yeah, I'm not sure if, if that's the right time to do that. And it's a good thing I did because of how, you know, eventually things did turn out. And when things get better or if they get better or better than the way they are now, I may look into that because, I mean, you can always make money. If you got a truck, you can always make money. So, I mean, it's not a bad investment. I just want to make sure that I'm able to pay for it. <laughs> morning, guys. Hey, morning. Coffee? Yeah, sure. You, you don't even be on social media all like that no more. I, I don't because I, I be out here working. I mean, man, listen, like, big, well, when I first started, you know, everything was just new and exciting to me, I'm be honest. When I first, uh, so I was, you know, posting all the time because everything was just so interesting to me, you know. But once I got into it, once I, like, really got into it and got comfortable and said, okay, this is how it is, you know, social media didn't seem so, you know, I wasn't so quick to post anymore. It's like... Yeah, whatever. Because you got a, also you got a million and one um, trucking pages out there. They're pretty much telling you the same information, and I'm telling you, and my day pretty much goes the same every day. I get up, I shower. If I if I'm close to a truck stop, get something to eat, start driving. <laughs> you do the same thing until you decide to take a break. That's pretty much it. So I mean, there's nothing exciting to really post about that. Um, so that's the reason why I'm not really on social media like that. I agree. I, I definitely yeah. agree. I, I just think uh, way too many new drivers when they when they get in it. I, and like you even said, like in the beginning, it was all new. It was exciting. You wanted to get yeah. your 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 journey out there. You talk about it. But as you get more comfortable and more uh more acclimated with, with what you're doing, 
yeah, you you exactly. start to focus more and more on the outside world than focusing exactly. on everything that's on the social media world. That is so true. That is so true. That is. I mean, I, again, like I said, the, the, the excitement wore off. <laughs> I just did. I just did. But I mean, like, you know, once in a while, you know, somebody will send me like a message or something like that. And then I'll like direct message and if they ask questions or something like that, I'll still do that. But like me being on there all the time, you know, why would I be on social media? I need to sleep. <laughs> That's my attitude. I need to get me some sleep. <laughs> you you being a female being a female trucker that was on social media at one point, uh did you get an abundance of like like male drivers coming after you? What what was some of the horror stories that that, that was in your DM? DMs. It was the stuff that was out here. Like in real life was what was crazy. It wasn't even in the DMs. You know, the, you know, you did have a few guys that were, you know, hey, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, let's meet up or some crap like that. I'm like, bro, you were just no. You know, it, it, I've never done anything crazy on social media. Everybody was pretty decent on, on social media, but it was like actually out here, out here. I can't tell you how many times, you know, dudes thought I was a lot lizard or dudes thought that I was prostitute. And I'm like, oh my God, I am a driver. Can you get the hell out of the way? Like it was, it, it's, it's, it's been so crazy, crazy stuff. Like, you know, people can be a little creepy out here, but you know, um, I have a tendency to keep to myself and um, I don't play no games. I go from point A to point B. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm inside of a truck stop or something like that and, you know, some random person, you know, says hi or something like that, I'm, I'm not going to act like an asshole. I, you know, my mother gave me manners. I taught me manners. I'm, I'm going to say hello back. But I'm, I'm not out here to play around. I'm not here to do what I got to do. So I keep my head low and I just keep it moving. So, but online, no, nothing super crazy. I've had a couple of offers to be team drivers. Like, you, I don't even know you. Like, I'm not going to team with you, um, but other than that, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Every, everybody's super genuine. Or, uh, I was uh, going to ask you that. Would, would, you ever, would you ever consider team driving? What, and if know. so, yeah. would you consider oh. team driving with a male or a female? Um, if I was – I would never – team drive i i i'm i'm not um it's it's a small space in here um i i i, I use every inch of my truck uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not good with sharing i'm i'm not um but if that was something that i would do male or female it really doesn't matter i was literally on a train of truck with a with a male you know i won't well he's not a stranger now but then he was and it's not bad as long as you you know have respect and you have a mutual understanding of what this is like you know and you know and and, and set the boundaries right away it, it doesn't matter uh male or female but i personally would never i would never team drive guys <laughs> i just can't i i like having you know the little privacy i do have i like to keep it <laughs> I avoid relationships because I can't count on them. Is there a a, a trucker buddy in your life? He's, he's been a trucker buddy is kind of hard because they say they're understanding, but they're not very understanding. So, um, no, there is no trucker buddy right now. There was, but there isn't one. It's, it's very hard. Trucking is hard to, you know, relationship-wise, unless you have your partner with you. And that was definitely not going to happen. Um, they can be kind of hard because they say they're understanding and they're really not. And, you know, there are times when, you know, you want to, they're sleeping and you're driving and they try to stay awake to talk to you and vice versa. And, you know, when it's time to go to sleep for a driver, they need to go. So um, it's, it was, it's hard. But, I mean, some pe and again, I'm not the type of person that goes home too often. So that was also another problem. So no, no. And I'm not really looking for nobody right now. Again, I just want to focus on me. Now, I don't know. When I take my little break, maybe I'll go out and have me a little fun. But for right now, no, I'm just chilling. <laughs> What's the problem? I suck at relationships. 
Should have been a guy. Nah, a guy wouldn't worry about sucking at relationships. <laughs> oh, you said relationship for truckers is hard. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it is it hard to the fact that neither one of y'all can like like make way to each other, or it's just hard that like you're up during the day, he's up at night, and he's trying to stay up during the day with you, or something like that. It's it's just giving each other time. It's giving each other the time. It's not like because like it, it's it is. It's just giving each other time. You know. You can easily say, hey, you know, I'm in this particular area. I'm a couple of hours away, you know, meet me here and, and stuff like that. You can make the attempt, um, you know, to, you know, to actually have a relationship. Um, but for me, um, getting home often, you know, like I, at that time I was trying to, I was getting home like once a month. And then it went from once every two months because I like to be on the road for three months at a time and then go home. But when I started dating again, it went from, um, you know, going every three months to once a month. And they were like, yeah, this is cool. This is fine. It works for me, blah, blah, blah. But I think that and then when we did talk to each other on the phone, half the time I was falling asleep because I had been driving all day and they worked too. And so our time just never really matched up and I'm, you know, and it just, it just didn't work out. And my thing is, is like, I believe in, you should be able to give your partner the time that they deserve. And, and I just wasn't willing to bend on certain things because I have a goal and it's, you know, and right now that's what I'm really focused on. And I can't be focused on, I mean, I try to be focused on them as well. It, it just didn't work out. So and that's okay. So how about uh how how about trucker relationship? Do you think uh do you think it's better to have a trucker relationship with another with another trucker or with a civilian? Who said the key to this business is personal relationships? Suddenly it was all. I don't know. I can't imagine taking a trucker. Out here. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that in a bad way. But I just, I don't know. I just can't imagine dating another trucker. They, they, truckers are a different type of breed of people, man. And I'm including myself in that. Um, they, you know, because I've changed quite a bit since becoming a trucker. So it's just different. I, I, would, I would assume it would make it a lot easier because you have an understanding. You know what the other person is going through and you know what, um, you know, a day in a life for them is like. So I would assume that another trucker would be a bit more understanding of that. Um, so I, I would say yes, but I personally, I would not date a trucker. I just, I just wouldn't. So I don't know. <laughs> you would rather date a civilian, but you got to definitely would, make sure that the civilian pretty much understands what, 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 what you're doing and what you're trying to do out here. Impossible relationships. My special gift is impossible relationships. Exactly. Exactly. Are are you? This, would you be afraid of 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 your significant other that you're dating? Would you be afraid that he'll look outside while you're gone for like three months at a time? Will you be afraid of that? After all, isn't that what relationships are all about? I mean, this is my attitude right now when it comes to dating. I'm not around. And I know for me, out of sight, out of mind, unfortunately. Um, that's how I am. Out of sight, out of mind. So nothing would really surprise me. I wouldn't be afraid of something like that. It, it wouldn't be surprising. I wouldn't be afraid of it because people are human. We're all human. So, I mean, you know, if you, you can say that, oh, I'm dating somebody. I'm going out with this person. I care about the this and the third. But, if, you know, that person is, you pretty much is, you're not around them. You're not able to spend time with them, um, you know, physically or, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, in person, I mean. Um, you're not able to spend time with them, you know, for three months. You know, so you literally see this person like four times a year, you know, and it's just, you know, 
I, I just, I don't have that expectation. And I'm very upfront about that. I have been upfront about that. I'm like, hey, listen, like, you know, I'm, I'm very understanding of certain things. But, you know, I also said that if, you know, if you come to a point where this isn't working out for you or, you know, you found someone else, let me know so we're not wasting each other's time. That's pretty much how, how that goes. Okay. okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cheating Evan. Cheating Evan who? <laughs> Cheating eventually gets you killed. <laughs> but no, I wouldn't be afraid of anything like that because I'm kind of being a little, I won't say that I'm being selfish, but right now my goal is me. I'm focused more on me right now. And um, so I can understand if that person saying, hey, you know, I've, I've met someone that I can actually spend time with and hey, go ahead and do you. That's how I feel about it. I'm glad that I I was able to catch you again, man. Because like I said, it's been been a long time, man. And I I was it, wondering it, I was wondering what you was doing, like, yeah, what's D the trucker doing? And then I, I happened I, to I happened to catch you. I, I happened <laughs> I happened to catch you because I think you did yeah. one one Instagram, and I I came in. Of course, I came in your. But. Um, <laughs> I, I, I happy to catch you, and yeah, it's a good thing that we was able to connect back up, man. So thank yeah. you. Oh, thank you, man. I, I, I like it's it's just like again, like I said, just just got into the flow of things and just out here just living real life. That's it. They're still out here trucking, still on this truck, and um, and that's pretty much it. Nothing special. <laughs> Got it locked, boy. Want you to love me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah, don't make me